Do you really need an expensive, dedicated astronomy camera and a very large go-to mount to take amazing pictures of deep sky objects? Hell, Hell no. no! Hi, I'm Walt, this is Delta Astrophotography, and tonight we're gonna photograph the Veil Nebula with a DSLR camera, a star tracker, and a few accessories. Let's do this. Tonight I'm gonna shoot the entire Veil Nebula also known as the Cygnus Loop. It is a supernova remnant from a star 20 times more massive than our sun that exploded 10 to 20,000 years ago. So what do we need to take a picture of this? Before we can decide what equipment to use, we need to understand that the Veil Nebula is very dim, extremely dim. I would not call this a beginner target. One of the reasons the Veil Nebula is so dim and difficult to photograph is because it's mostly hydrogen alpha, which is a wavelength of light in the red spectrum, but our cameras do a very poor job at capturing that wavelength of light because there's a filter in front of a DSLR camera sensor and most camera sensors that filter out certain wavelengths of light that we don't really need to see. And so to get around that, you probably know where this is going. It's best to get your camera astro modified. Now what this means is somebody goes in and removes that filter and either leaves your sensor naked or puts another filter in front that still filters out maybe infrared, but leaves it able to capture more hydrogen alpha. I have an astro-modified Canon T5i that I had modified by LifePixel. Now you might not wanna do that. Your DSLR might be your one camera, your baby, and you don't wanna have it permanently altered. There's no turning back after this. No! But I do recommend getting on eBay, maybe finding you a, a cheap secondhand DSLR and use it as a backup camera for a while. And next time you have a spare $275, send it off to LifePixel and they'll set you up with an Astro modified camera. Fast optics are key in bringing out faint details in dim objects like the Veil Nebula. Of course, we can use a star tracker to do much longer exposures and bring out details that way, and we will. But a telescope or lens with a low focal ratio is really gonna give us that extra punch, that extra light gathering power that we need. I'm using a Radian 61 triplet APO refractor telescope with a focal length of 275 millimeters and an F ratio of F4.5. This lets in a lot of light, a lot more compared to the 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens or the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter telephoto zoom lens but these are both usable as well. They're just not gonna be as bright and the stars won't be quite as sharp. Now, another thing that's gonna help is being able to connect our camera to a computer of some kind, whether it's a laptop or a device like this, the ASI Air Pro. Not only will we be auto guiding using a guide camera and scope connected to the computer and our star tracker to get more accurate tracking results, but also when we take our test images, we can use software in the laptop like astrophotography tool or Nina or Backyard EOS or Backyard Nikon or the software in the ASI Air to stretch our preview images to make them brighter so we can actually see the hidden details in there. Tonight I'm also going to try something a little different. I'm going to use a narrow band filter. This is an Optolong L Enhance and it picks up mostly hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 and maybe a little hydrogen beta. Basically it's going to pick up the colors red and teal, and it's gonna filter out most of all the other light, light pollution, and even a little bit of starlight, making the stars a little smaller. Now with that light pollution filter installed in this telescope, that's gonna create a new problem. See, the way I would normally frame up a deep sky target is by looking through my viewfinder, finding a star close to my target, and moving accordingly, or looking at the live view screen, but because this filter is so dark, it gets rid of so much light that I'm not gonna be able to see shit out of here. Almost nothing. Another method I used to use is to use a laser pointer and I would shine the laser right through the viewfinder and would it come out the other end of the telescope and that would help me be able to very accurately aim this thing wherever I wanted to. Now I don't really recommend that. Please don't go out and do that unless you know what you're doing because I don't wanna be responsible for you burning your camera sensor with a laser beam or blinding a pilot and causing him to crash. So how am I gonna get around this problem? I'm gonna try this out. This is a Telrad finder scope cost about $45, $50, something like that. Basically, you just turn it on and there is a red bullseye in here and I don't have to squint when I look through it like I would normally do with a finder scope. All I have to do is look right up through it and I see a bullseye and I find the star I'm looking for in that bullseye and it's very easy. Check it out. As you can see, there's a bullseye in there. 
that's gonna help me out a lot when I'm pointing straight up into the sky. And as you can see here, the Telrad is very light. Nine ounces, it's not even a whole pound. What is that, 256 grams? And with my Star Tracker's weight capacity at 11 pounds, this is not going to affect things much at all. Now let's look at the entire rig and break down what every piece does. And here it is. Ooh. Yum, Yum spaghetti. spaghetti. Actually, it's not as bad as it looks, so let's break it down. We'll start right here. This piece is my Star Tracker, the iOptron Skyguider Pro. It's gonna rotate my camera with the motion of the stars to allow me to take very long exposures. Next up, we have my camera, which is a modified Canon T5i. It's just modified to pick up more red light. That's about it. In front of the camera is a Radian 61 telescope. Now let's start down here. This is the Pegasus Pocket Power Micro Box. This supplies electricity to everything on my rig. Starting right here, this supplies power to my camera. That way I can take photographs all night and never have to worry about changing a battery. Next, we have power cords to my two dew heater straps, one here and one over here on this side on my guide scope. Now connected to the power box as well is a humidity sensor. This detects when dew will start to form here or when there's enough humidity in the air for dew to form, and that's when it will turn the dew heater bands on. Now this also supplies power to the ASI Air, my little mini computer that I use to remote control the rig with a phone or a tablet. Plugged into this, I have my DSLR camera. Got that going into here. That way I can control my camera completely wirelessly. And my guide camera as well. This is actually a little camera. It's plugged into here with a USB cable as well. And also coming out of the guide camera is this little ST4 cord plugged into the star tracker right here. And that way the guide camera, the ASI Air, and the star tracker can all communicate to help accurately track the night sky. And of course, the Telrad focuser is on top. And that's it. That's pretty much everything that goes into this setup. Now we wait for darkness. Okay, it's about 11 o'clock at night. Let me fill you in what I've done so far. I've set everything up. I have polar aligned with the North Star and I've balanced my rig. After that, I decided to go ahead and calibrate this uh, Telrad finder scope. So I pointed my camera at a street light in the distance and got it centered up in my live view. And then I adjusted these knobs on the back of the Telrad so that the street light was also in the center of the bullseye. After that was done, I went ahead and put the Optolong l Extreme filter in the telescope, and then I pointed my camera up at the star Vega to where it was centered in the bullseye of the Telrad. And I took a test shot, and I cannot believe it, it was almost dead center of the frame on the first test shot. I was able to put on a batten off mask in front of my telescope and focus incredibly easy. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see this or not. But this came up almost dead center of the screen on my tablet when I took that test shot. I'm so impressed with this Telrad. I think this is gonna make my life so much easier. All right, so the next thing we're gonna look- What's, What's up, up human? human? Oh God, where'd you come from? In your, your house, house, eating your, your spaghetti. spaghetti. That's not okay. What do you want besides my spaghetti? The, the world. world. Can't help you there, buddy. Oh. How about, How about camera, camera settings? settings? Right, camera settings. So camera settings are gonna be relatively easy, especially because we don't have to even worry about aperture with a telescope. I'm gonna use an ISO of 1600 and a shutter speed or exposure time of around 180 seconds or three minutes. For those of you who are interested in uh, getting an ASI Air of some kind, let me show you how that works. Okay, so here's the ASI Air interface on my tablet. I've already got my camera and everything connected. So if we wanna set our camera settings, I'm just gonna go up to this camera icon up here in the top. And here I can set my ISO if it would focus long enough. Yep, I have it set to 1600, but you can choose whatever ISO you want. I'm gonna tap the screen to get back out of this. Now for our shutter speed, we got exposure time down here in our little preview uh, menu on the side. I can change my shutter speed to whatever I want. We want 180 seconds. And then I just hit this button right here to take a test shot. When I'm ready to, for the real thing, I click on this preview here and go down to auto run. Click this icon right here. 
and go right here and I can set it to take light frames, exposure seconds. I'll set it to 180 or you can press this button right here to write in a custom number. Repeat 60 times. I'm gonna take 60 exposures. You can set it to take however many you want and hit okay. And now we're just gonna back out of here. And when we're ready to take all 60 of our exposures, just hit that button and it does it automatically. Now I'm gonna go ahead and frame up my target and take a test shot and I will be back with you in just a few minutes. Okay, so here's my first test shot. I'm pretty excited. We're gonna go ahead and hit this auto stretch down here and see what it looks like. Boom. Okay, so it may not be the entire uh, Veil Neb Nebula Cygnus loop, but it's the Witch's Broom. And I am so incredibly happy about this. I'm gonna leave it like this. Guys, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to finish this. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking exposures now. Well, I ended up being way too tired to film anymore last night. At about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, I went back out. I put the lens cap on my telescope and I kept the camera settings the same and I took 20 more photographs to use as dark frames. I stacked both my light frames and my dark frames in a software called Deep Sky Stacker and it spit out the image that I used to process. I didn't take any flats or bias this time because I was way too tired and I had to work the next morning. Maybe next time. Before I show you my final image, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give me a like. This video was more of a what can you do as opposed to a tutorial, but if you want more in-depth tutorials on things like the ASIR Pro, how to auto guide or anything else, leave a comment below and please subscribe. And as always, everybody, stay spacey, clear skies, and good night.